Well, all I've got on my side tray today is a tin of corn, and that's all I'm going to be using. I'm at Making Swishery today on phase three, and um, it's bitterly cold, but hopefully there's a few carp about, hopefully a few carp feeding. There might even be some skimmers and roach as well. Surprising what you can catch on corn. Um, I've not wet a, I've not wet a line yet. I've not fed anything yet, so, um, but I'm confident of catching a few fish for the cameras. Let's just see if we can. Well, this is a mature, very established snake lake. A lot of old, wise, wary carp in here. A lot of silvers, a lot of roach. Um, there's an odd F1, but um, it's carp that are the main target. If I can catch 10 carp today, I'll be more than happy. Um, and it's very silty. It's four foot down the middle and three foot across. Two and a half to three foot. Um, I'm going to start off in the deeper water, very, very frugally, just feeding a pinch of corn, very, very lightly, half a dozen grains of corn. In a, in a toss pot and um, I'm going to just leave the far bank for a good half an hour and just see what I can catch in the deeper water and then I'm going to push over without feeding anything and start dobbing, dobbing some corn across uh, against the reefs to see if any fish have backed off but I'm just going to start off in the deeper water just to see because I don't want to pull up any fish um, from the island over any fish that might be feeding in the deeper water so and if the fish want to back off they can back off towards the island so I'm going to leave the island completely undisturbed and just kick off in the deep water just on one swim I'm not going to prime any swims today I'm just going to start off by tapping five or six grains of corn and um, start really really softly cold very cold morning so it will take a while for these fish to warm up and if they start feeding we can start slowly um, building up the quantity of feed and start feeding larger amounts but very very softly to begin with and uh, hopefully that will put a few early fish in the net. Well, that's a bit of an old warrior. And um, that's my very first look down the edge. I've gone 13 meters down the margins. Um, it's two and a half foot deep there. I've literally just tapped in five grains of corn, lowered it in, waited a minute, and a single grain of corn, full depth, and this carp snaffled it. Really hard fighting fish as well. It did not want to come to the net. But um, I've caught it quite early in the session. A lot of people think you only go down the margins in the last hour. Um, I'll slip him back. Um, a lot of people think you go down the margins, you know, last hour in a session, if at all, you know, in the winter. But um, on these sort of snake legs, some of these big carp, they live down the edges, especially at makings and, uh, and real mature sort of snake lake type venues. A lot of carp live down the edges anyway, so don't be scared to have a very early look down there. I've not primed it. There's no need to. I've just gone tapped in a, a small amount of bait, gone straight in on it and I've caught one. Um, so and I could potentially do it the other way as well but that looks like the most fishy looking corner and um, so I'm not too surprised I've caught a nice carp down there first look we'll see if, we, if it's a, a resident fish or if there's two or three more down there but um, but yeah that's a really good sign to catch one down the margins pretty early into a session Well, it's only four foot at its deepest today, and it's only two and a half to three foot down the margins and across, so two rigs covers everything. Um, my full depth rig for fishing in the deepest water, I've got a 0.2 gram um, Pablo RWC hook, and that's on, um, that's on they're, well, they're both on 018 um, Power Micron line with 014 um, hook lengths to a 16 MXC1, and I'm using the pre-tied hook lengths today and um, both with 10 to 12 slick elastic as well so the main line elastic and hook length are exactly the same it's just the floats that are different and the depths I'm fishing at um, I've got a 0.2 gram float for fishing in sort of three to four foot of water and that takes six number tens quite spread out down the line because there's quite a bit of water clarity um, it's not like a really muddy summertime venue so uh, nice and spread out catch the fish's eye on the way down and then my lighter rig is a 0.1 gram mojo 
same line hooks elastic and um, I'm going to use this for fishing in two and a half foot down the edge and also for dobbing around against the island and down the edges as well so at the moment it's set two foot deep I'll sell it anything from sort of 15 inches to two and a half foot um, fishing off the bottom with corn skins and um, all I've got down there is I've got one number 12 halfway down the line you see that there and um, and all the rest of the shot are under the float um, and this shot isn't is you don't see bites thanks to the shot or anything that all that shot does is help the line pull through the surface tension and help the hook bait fall um, if you add no shot at all down the line and sometimes your bait will just stick in the surface edge and it will not pull through so that was shot all that's doing is, is pulling it through the bites will be walloped straight under anyway so um, there's no need to have shot down the line and by having very very little or just that one shot down the line you've got the slowest fall possible as it's going past these fish's eyes and then they'll they'll have it usually so uh so that's it two simple rigs and um nice and light strung out try and catch the fish's eye on the way down and um you'll hopefully put a few more fish in your net. Well, that's come out of the blue. I've just put a uh, corn skin on, dobbed it around where I hoped there were some fish and had a few little roachy sort of bites. Um, but you could just tell there were roach pecking at the corn skins and I've dropped it a bit further out, out of my peg to my right where it's a little bit shallower. Another roachy looking bite and I've struck and uh, no, it's not, it's a carp <laughs> on a corn skin. It's probably two foot deep in, um, in three foot of water. Just fluttering down, one number 12 down the line, that's all. And um, just one or two squashed grains of corn on the hook. I'll show you that in a minute. But that's just fluttered down. As soon as it's settled, waited a second and boom, it's gone. It's not a massive fish, but they're all welcome on a chilly day like today. Oh. Lovely. Looks like an F1. Yeah. <laughs> Block of ice, but on the corn skins. So you don't always need bread when you're dobbing. A couple of corn skins can be really good, especially if there's a lot of roach in the peg as well. Slip them in the keep net. Well, dobbing is quite a well-known tactic now uh, on commercial fisheries, just suspending a uh, hook bait well off the bottom for sort of very um, sort of dormant carp and, um, and F1s. And most people will do it with bread, but on a venue like this, especially because there's a lot of roach about, actually corn skins can be a better option. They don't seem so, um, they're a bit more roach proof. And also the carp love corn on a venue like this and uh, corn skins can, just can be a really nice alternative to bread. Um, and um, to do that, I've got a 16, got a 16 MXC one and um, I've just got just find a nice grain of corn and just squash it squash all the insides out it can be very very rough looking and uh, you all you want is a husk really so and I'll just hook through the the thicker part of the husk now one of those it acts like a bit like a parachute there's literally nothing in there's no food or anything in there but it falls so so slowly and a carp will just suck it in wondering what it is and you'll get a really positive bite off a corn skin but don't be scared to put two on either and sometimes sometimes two is better sometimes one you won't you can't always squeeze the um every grains not always sometimes you have to have a couple of goes and it sometimes takes a little bit longer than punching a bit of bread to get a decent grain that you can that you can squeeze some some grains just don't squeeze very well so uh so but there's two corn skins there and uh 
it's a lovely little slow sinking parachute and um, on a venue like this it works really really well you can even do it on the waggler and things like that as well but don't ignore trying there's no food value in that whatsoever but it doesn't mean a fish uh, a big carp is gonna is not gonna uh, try and suck it in thinking it is something so uh, yeah give corn skins a go just had another one on the corn skins it's been a bit funny right in front of me loads of little rattles and they're roach you can just tell there's a load of roach there and um, just give them, just messing around with the hook bait really so I've gone I've put my 16 meter section on and gone as far up to my right as possible missed a bite and that didn't look like a roachy bite and gone straight back in and I've uh, hooked a carp so it just shows use the width to your advantage as well straight in front of me definitely loads of roach even though it's a little bit deeper there as well all the roach are like marauding around around the hook bait I've gone well out way from where I've been fishing dropped it in and there's a carp about but that was on uh, one corn skin I've been trying one and two but one seems seems right today it's a hard day they're not they're not going they're not going ravenous the, the, the fact that I've had to go out of my peg shows that they're uh, they're backing off a little bit today I think if there was more anglers on the lake it would actually work in our favor but they just tend to back off if they're not that interested but I'm sure later on in the day they'll come to us but at the moment we've got to go to them it's like a nice common He's woke up. I suppose I should use this puller kit thing. <laughs> there we are. Oh, I missed him. Bad angling. Forgetting to use my puller and forgetting to, to net it when they come up. There we are. We got him. Nice little common. Lovely fishing here. And because the water's so clear, they're quite vivid. He's still thrashing around. Perfectly hooked in the top lip. Cracking little makings common. Well, after a couple of fish fishing corn skins off the deck, just dobbing it around the far bank, it wasn't great. There was a few fish there, but it felt like they wanted a bit of bait. So I've, I've gone over with a pole pot, just put a little toss pot on, tapped in six, seven grains of corn and fishing full depth over the top. With the same rig, I've just pushed the float up. It's, a, it's exactly three foot where I've, I've caught. I've, I've probably waited a minute and then it's just buried and I've got this on. He's very angry. He's kited right out of my peg and I don't know how I managed to stop him to be honest. I think he's in the mouth as well. They just fight so hard in this venue. I mean I'm fishing an 014 hook length today and I daren't fish any lighter than that even in the winter because they uh, have a habit of pulling like this one. <laughs> they do not give up. I think we got him now. Come on. And pretty much every fish I've caught as well has had a few sort of leeches in its mouth where they've been holed up, just not moving a lot. That's a sure so sign that they're not doing a lot. They're not swimming around too much. But single grain of corn on a 16. Oh, he's a nice fish. You can see him at least at least 18 inches under the water. Yeah, he's a ghosty. Well, I'm using pre-tied hook lengths as well today and uh, this is definitely a good test for those. And uh, to be honest, they're as good as anything I could tie myself. Go on, yes. Oh, a little lean torpedo there. sort of a ghost mirror <laughs> look at him look at those flippers on him no wonder he fought so hard but there's not a lot of belly on him is there he needs a bit more corn inside him 
<laughs> Not the prettiest of fish, but uh, put up a good scrap. <laughs> 